What I've decided to do is I decided to create a flow chart to make things a little bit easier for you, for you to understand all of the different steps you need to take within the most comprehensive and complicated weighted average cost of capital question. And we could divide this, and we're actually gonna look at it as well, but we could divide this into three categories, okay? And I'll zoom out a little bit so we see everything. So we could definitely divide this into three categories, right? Which is what we just mentioned within our WAC formula, equity, debt, and preferred shares. What I want you to understand is that preferred shares may not always be there, but in this video, we're gonna assume that your most complicated question will include this, all right? So within these three different categories, equity, debt, and preferred shares, we're gonna look at two different subcategories within each of them. We're gonna be looking at how do we compute the market value? Then how do we compute the cost of that specific type of financing? When we're looking at how do we compute the market value of that specific type of financing, we're typically just gonna do the number of shares or bonds outstanding multiplied by the price per share or the price per bond, all right? However, when we're solving for the price per share or for the price of bond, we're gonna to need to take a step back because we're gonna to have to utilize the formulas that we've learned and mastered within our equity valuation and bond valuation chapter. Notice that on the screen right now, we have a bunch of present value formulas on the right. You see, you see our constant growth DDM formula right here and our just slash dividend discount model here. We have our bond valuation formula right here. And then we have our par values times premium or discount formula. So that's how we're gonna equip ourselves to find the price per share. Typically, by the way, these exam questions, we're always gonna give you the number of shares outstanding. Now that we understand the first subcategory of essentially financing that we're gonna look at, we need to look at the second subcategory, which is the cost of that type of financing. Now there's gonna be three costs, right? There's gonna be three different types of costs and it's gonna require us to essentially use a specific formula every single time. Now that you have a general sense of what this flow chart is all about, I would like to kind of jump into them one by one. So let's begin with our, essentially our equity section, our first category. Now, as mentioned previously, within our equity section, we're gonna look at two subcategories. The first one, the market value of equity, and the second one, the cost of equity. Let us begin with the market value of equity. In order for you to find the market value of equity, you're gonna to need to highlight two things. The first thing will be the number of shares outstanding. That's a walk in the park, that's easy. They're gonna give you that in the question. The second thing that you're gonna to need to highlight to solve for the market value of equity is to find the price per share. More often than not, for you to find the price per share within these complicated questions, you're gonna to have to do the following. You're gonna to have to use one of the two formulas here either the constant growth DDM in order to solve for P0 or simply a perpetuity formula to solve for P0 if the dividend is constant with no growth, all right? This is something that we've seen in detail within our equity valuation chapter. And in this video, when we jump into the third segment, we're gonna be looking at how we're gonna equip ourselves with this. But this should be kind of straightforward still, all right? You just gotta identify the different pieces of the question that's, that talks about you know, growth or dividends or blah, blah, blah. Now within the second subcategory of our equity section, which is the cost of equity, you're simply gonna need to use one formula more often than not, if nothing else is provided. And that is gonna be your CAPM formula in order to solve for the required rate of return of the firm. In other words, the cost of equity of the firm. And in order for you to do so, it's very simple. It's actually the simplest thing out there. It's simply the SML line, right? The risk-free rate plus beta times the market risk premium, which stands for the market return minus the risk-free rate. It's really as easy as that. Kind of a really walk of the park. And once you have these two buckets, you would be able to kind of like go back in our WAC formula and say, you know what? I have KE and I have E, but we still don't have V. V is going to come at the very end of our whole flow chart. All right? So now that we understand how to solve for the equity portion, let's move on to the second category of this flow chart, which is debt. Now, debt, once again, could also be divided into two sections, the market value of debt 
and the cost of debt. Let's begin with the market value of debt. The market value of debt, if you want to find it, it's very straightforward. You're going to take the number of bonds outstanding. So how many bonds were issued? Multiplied by the price of the bond. Now, if the bond was not issued at par, in other words, $1,000, you're going to need to solve for the price of the bond. Now, this is bringing us back to our bond valuation chapter in which we had our bond valuation formula. All right, let's do a quick walkthrough. Your bond valuation formula will require you to do the coupon, all right, divided by essentially the yield to market for that effective period. So let's say your yield to market here is 4%, but it's only, it's like an annual coupon. Well, KB is going to be 4%. If you have a semi-annual coupon, KB is going to be 2%. If you have a quarterly coupon, KB will be 1%. So notice how we have to divide it by frequency every single time. If you need like a refresher on the bond valuation formula, don't hesitate to watch my numerous videos on YouTube and to go on ismahelps.com for an interactive lesson on what the heck is actually going on here, all right? So that said, then you're gonna have one minus one over one plus KB to the power of N. N will not be the amount of years. It'll be the amount of years time number of payments per year. So if you have 10 years right left on the bond and you have annual payments, N will be equal to 10. If you have four coupon payments per year, then N will be equal to 40. Then we're gonna have plus F, which is the face value, always a thousand typically, divided by one plus KB to the power of N. And that's how you would find the present value of a bond. Very straightforward. It's literally what we looked at in our bond valuation formula uh, chapter. Sorry about that. And it's really the easiest form of that. So once you're able to highlight your price per bond and you're able to figure out how many bonds are outstanding, you can multiply these two numbers together in order to solve for the total market value of debt. It's as simple as that. Once you have that, you're going to move on to solve for the cost of debt. Okay. The cost of debt is very interesting. You're always going to need to take your yield to market. Okay. In this example, we have 4%. However, that's not it because we need to account for the number of compounding periods within the year. And the number of compounding periods within the year, what for these types of questions, we're going to take it as being the number of payments within the year. In other words, the frequency. That's why we have F on our screen right here, F, right? So in YTM, A means the yield to market per year, the annualized yield to market. Now, with that said, this formula that you see here may be foreign to you, but it's actually another format or another, essentially another way of writing our effective periodic rate formula. All that we're doing is we're taking our yield to market, we're dividing it by the frequency. So if it's 4% with two payments per year, you'd have 2%. And then you're going to put that to the power of two to find your actual effective cost of debt per year. Because we need to take into consideration the number of compounding periods per year. This is whole idea of the opportunity cost. Okay, And that's how you would solve for the cost of debt. Don't you worry. We're going to do this together for two exam-like questions. So you're going to have a lot of exposure. Now that we're done with that, we can move on into the last category of our market value for the firm, and that's going to be preferred shares. Now, quick caveat before we proceed. Preferred shares aren't always included. However, the most extensive question will include that, and I want you to be prepared, and I want you to understand how to solve for them. And it's actually quite easy. So once again, preferred shares can be divided into two segments. One, how do we find the market value of preferred shares? And then two, how do we find the cost of issuing preferred shares? What does that mean for us in the business? Let's begin with the first section, which is the market value of preferred shares. If we look at the market value of preferred shares, it's simple still. You take the number of shares outstanding multiplied by the price per share. In other words, the price per preferred share, not the price per common share. Very important to make that distinction because like that, you're going to have a mistake and we don't want that. So how do we find the price per preferred share? It's very, very straightforward. On the exam, they may ask you to either do one of two things. They may ask you to use this formula right here in which you're going to do essentially, I can't even use my brain right now, but 
let's say we move that, it'll be DPS over K and that's gonna give you the price of the preferred share. So we're just using our perpetuity formula. Or if that's not the case and they issue a question at which preferred shares are being traded at a premium or discount at, at their par value, all that you have to do is use the following formula, okay? The present value, so the price per preferred share will be equal to the par value times the premium on the share or the discount on the share. A question will typically note this as being, hey, preferred shares are trading at a 10% premium or 110% premium and so on and so forth. So that's how you would find your price per preferred share. Once you have your price per preferred share, what are you gonna do? Well, you're gonna take that price, you're gonna take that amount and you're gonna multiply it by your number of preferred shares outstanding. And that's gonna give you your market value of preferred shares. Now we're happy. We get to move on to the second category here within our preferred share section. And that's gonna be, how do we find the cost of preferred shares? What you're gonna do is straightforward. Okay, you're gonna take your dividend payment, okay, for preferred shares divided by the current price of preferred shares, all right? And that's gonna give you your required rate of return on preferred shares and give you your cost on preferred shares. And that's how you solve for these. If that's not too clear for you just yet, don't worry because we're gonna be looking at a example, actually two examples at which we're gonna have different dynamics, different gymnastics, for our preferred share section. And it's gonna give you a lot of exposure there. So let's take a step back. We just walked through the three different stages of our essentially comprehensive WAC questions, equity, debt, and preferred shares. And I want you to understand that we're gonna always break it down into two sections. How do we compute the market value of one of those topics? And how do we compute the cost of financing for one of those topics, all right? It's as easy as that. I would definitely recommend that you use this flowchart when you practice for these questions. That you add this flowchart to your cheat sheet if you're allowed to have one on your exam. And I would also maybe recommend that you try to write this down yourself such that you understand the steps allocated towards these complicated WAC questions for your exams, for your assessments, and for your projects. There's a reason why we're using all of these, right? We're not gonna go too much in detail on them because we wanna be efficient we want to start walking through questions together, but still, it's a very good exercise to have when solving for exam like problems and to understand the material at play. So now that we finished the second segment of our question or of our video, sorry, we get to move on to solving exam like questions. And how do we, one, identify the material? How do we highlight the right things? How do we look for the right elements, and then how do we just compute for them by using a flowchart? Really as easy as that. And that's gonna give us the opportunity to solve for the long elongated version of WAC. In this video, we're gonna be looking at two exam-like questions. The first one, we're gonna walk through it step by step. We're gonna solve these things together. The second one, we're gonna kind of sprint through it, assuming that you've had the exposure needed, but still need like another perspective on these types of questions, such that you could learn in a non-static way. So, sorry about that. We can now move on to solving our first exam-like question. And we're really gonna highlight everything step by step. 